This episode of Six Five Guys is brought to you by Defiance Machine, defying tradition with innovation. Our Bros Rifles, precision on another level. JC Steel Targets, the industry leader in quality AR500 steel targets. Hi, and welcome to the 6-5 Guys. I'm Ed Mobley. And I'm Steve Lawrence. And today we have the mother load. It's the long-awaited and long-anticipated 6.5 Creedmoor Brass from Lapua. Yeah, so we just got this a couple of weeks ago from Graphs, so shout out to them. Uh, this is, if you don't have some of this already, it is shipping now and should be available if, you know, you're, you're well, they've got a container load coming in in like mid-March. Right. So then the, the channel should be nice and full. Yeah. So for this episode, we're going to actually be doing some tests and some measurements just to understand what this is all about. It's a little bit different than your typical 6.5 Creedmoor brass. has a small primer hole, a flash hole for the primers, and it does have your reputable Lapua quality. So we're actually gonna try and do some testing around the consistency as well as how long this brass would last in terms of number of reloads. Exactly, and with any pseudo-scientific uh, endeavor, <laughs> I, I use the word pseudo, you know, our, our, our hypothesis going into this is because you've got that, that small rifle primer mm -hmm. and you have the, the traditionally stout Lapua construction, you know, we, we expect to see reloading life similar to what we see with 65 by 47 yeah. Lapua. Right. Now, anecdotally, we hear you know, a lot of guys with the current brass they're using for 65 Creedmoor getting, you know, in the range of about 78 reloads out of it. We'll see if we can actually push the boundaries on this safely and yeah. what we get out of it. Yeah, I mean, you, and, and most people say the reason why they're limited to the reloads is, is the primers get really loose. That's right. and, and, and again, all the other brass that's out there is large primer pocket. And so our, ex our empirical experience with 65 by 47 is you can get 15 reloads easy. Yeah. And so, you know, we would expect that, you know, running a stout match load, you could achieve that with, with this brass. Yeah. So why don't you guys take, take a look and come along and we'll be right back. Okay, we obtained a new box of 100 cases. MSRP about $120 a box, you can probably get them cheaper, and we randomly selected 31 cases for a number of measurements. Now we took four measurements, case weight, base to shoulder or datum length, overall length, and the neck run out. And here we are in my reloading dungeon, which will make most viewers feel very good about their reloading setup. In this case we're using the Hornady, or excuse me, I keep saying it's Hornady, the RCBS Charge Master, Charge yeah. Master uh, in order to weigh the cases. And very, very, very consistent. Yeah, classic bell-shaped curve. If you actually look at uh, the data here, 20 of the 30 cases were within 0.1 grain. Which I, I think Lapua sorts their product by weight before packaging. Okay. And here we are measuring the base to the shoulder datum using the Hornady measuring tool. Actually, that's the measuring tool that came with the wooden die, but it's the exact same as the Hornady right. tool. So in this case, uh, again, you see uh, very high consistency. There are four cases uh, on the upper end that uh, were you know, a little bit off spec and, and a couple on the, the lower end, but very, very consistent. But if you can resize to that consistency, you're doing well. And here we are measuring overall length with just a basic set of calipers. And I tell you, if I had to do this all day, I would go crazy. <laughs> Again, um, here you have very, very high consistency. Um, if you actually look at the, the min and max, um, you know, you're talking within one one hundredth uh, of an inch and uh, standard deviation of three thousandths across 30 cases. And here we are using the Sinclair concentricity tool to measure neck run out. 
And I noticed the care with which you were taking these measurements because, you know, absolutely going across each case, you could barely even see that needle move. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was very, very solid. And there are the neck run out numbers. Yeah. Out of the 30 cases, two were, uh, two one thousandths, um, of neck run out, but for the most part, they were within one one thousandth of an inch. And here we are after doing some test firings to set up the dies, just measuring the base to shoulder datum, just so we can get the shoulder set back just right during sizing. And here we are setting up the seating dies, set of wooden dies that our good mm -hmm. friend and Sherpa, Corey Bibby, lent yeah, us. Corey lent us his dies and rifle for this set of tests so shout out and thanks to him thank you so for the brass longevity test again we used a single case um using a 40 40 grain eldx h43 powder 43.1 grains and a small rifle magnum uh, primer And here I am using my Dillon. And again, using it essentially as a single stage because that's one of the nice things about the fact that it does an index. Now, because we're essentially going through a cycle multiple times, we're just trying to see how long the single case will last. The firing and reloading process, um, important to note that we did not do any type of annealing yeah. of the case. You can just see how the powder was kind of sticking. And while you were doing this and I was reloading, Corey was, was running, back and, running forth. back and forth. Now what that shows us is we've got a good reload. We're shooting everything from the same case, so it, it really isn't indicative of the quality of the case. But uh, if I'm going to be shooting 6.5 Creed War, that would probably be a good, good load to yeah, start with. Yeah, I would with. think so. Yeah, and there's shot 7. Again, SDF 4, average speed of 28.67. And again, pushing a 140 grain bullet. That's pretty decent speed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, even through all of these reloads, um, that primer pocket was still tight. Oh, yeah. I could feel it when I was seating it. You're not supposed to show all the spilled powder and primers on my floor, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Got to keep it real. Okay, we're on reload and test fire number 15. Now, before uh, we began the testing, we knew this could go on for quite some time and actually decided that once we hit 20, we would go ahead and, and stop testing with that kind of met a, a pretty high bar in terms of number right. of reloads and we decided to see if we could actually push the load even hotter and, and see what happened. We did. I mean, we shot it a few times past 20 with a pretty irresponsible load. Yeah. And the primer pocket was still tight. So again, uh, you know, this is where we landed. Um, muzzle velocity 2871 on average across the 20 loads, um, no signs of overpressure, and those primer pockets still tight. Yeah, and we shot a uh, 20 second a rifle with a Broughton barrel. They're known as fast barrels, so nope. don't try and duplicate this load yeah. in your rifle. You may not so get those velocities. After this last uh, test, we kind of looked at the brass okay. and everything looked good. So very, very consistent from the measurements. And the small primer pocket indeed really held tight. Yeah, really makes that brass last long. It's an heirloom quality brass. A premium price for a premium product, though, you get what you pay And availability for. may still be tight in some channels because it's so popular. Ed, that's been a really fun day testing the Lapua brass. Yeah, and a lot of the details and, and measurements that we shared in this video will be in a detailed article on our website, 65guys.com. 
you guys liked this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up on YouTube and share it with your friends on Facebook. And stay tuned for our next episode or upcoming episode mm -hmm. where we're going to take a look at the Alpha Munitions Brass. Guys, remember, life's an adventure. Stay on target. <laughs>